called a strike plate. That's because when the latch comes in, it strikes that plate and then pops, uh, because it's spring-loaded, it pops into this little receptacle here. Now you can see quite clearly, because this has been painted, that the latch has worn off the paint. Look, it's landing completely off the mark. It should be trued up so that it is coming right into this hole, but in fact it's missing. Now if, um, if you have this problem where you have to hip check the door just to get it to close, check to see if there are stress marks on the strike plate of the door. and um, if there aren't, but you're sure that, that for some reason the uh, latch isn't catching, take a, a crayon, mark it on the latch so that when the latch comes in it streaks the strike plate with, and then you'll be able to see sort of the track of the, because it does leave a, tra a trail of crayon. You can try chalk too if you happen to have dark finished wood, or but crayons work really great. So. Now, my first problem in getting the strike plate off is that these screws look like they're painted in permanently. So I'm just going to chip the paint off around the screws to give myself a head start getting the um, screws backed out of this strike plate. Often the screws that they use in um, door hardware are brass and they're very soft and it's really easy to wreck the heads as you're trying to pry them out of the door. Now these ones are silver colored so I think I'm not going to have that problem. So what I want to do is just use the screwdriver to chip away some of the paint. It's um, not as sharp so I can use it with a bit more confidence than I can a knife. And usually a lot of people carry around in their tool belt um, an old hacked up screwdriver just for this kind of thing. And of course, this is how they get hacked up, probably in the first place, using it just this way. Now, don't even think of starting to try to back the screws out without having cleared out that center slot really well. You need all the leverage you can get. So I'm going to go back to using my utility knife and score out the paint. I need as much depth as I can get. So these screws are as cleaned out now as I can get them. So it's time to get serious and try, start trying to back them out. Just before I do that, though, I want to make sure that I have the measurements uh, correct on how far to lower this thing. This. The bottom, uh, the bottom of the latch is hitting about uh, an eighth of an inch below, even I would even say between an eighth and a quarter of an inch below this, um, the bottom of the hole. So I'm going to want to lower the whole strike plate that distance. Okay, now I have this great tip. I found out that if you take a piece of chalk and coat the bottom of the screwdriver blade and the edges, you get better purchase in the slot of the screw that we're going to try to remove. Believe me, that baby's going to be in there. So I want to get the best leverage I can so that I don't strip these screws. And I'm going to just really use the, the door frame to brace myself and really lean into the screw before I start to turn it for Pete's sake. Oh, it's, completely, it's completely easy. How embarrassing. I set that all up with all this drama and of course it's really easy to get out. Okay, there, there you have it. I don't need, I probably could have just like unscrewed that without any problem whatsoever, but you know, it's, it's good to be prepared and now you see this one's really easy too. All right, so now I'm going to use my screwdriver to just pry the plate from its position. Whoop, there it comes. All right, so this is what we needed the chisels for. We need to see how, let me just scrape away some of this paint so I can show you clearly. So 
somebody's actually, I guess th these screws stripped out a long time ago because somebody's put spackle or putty in here at, uh, because they at one time got this hole too big. So um, that stuff's pretty hard to chip away, but we don't really need to bother. It's just interesting to see the history of a strike plate here. Now, remember I said that the, that the latch was hitting too low. So I'm going to lower the um, strike plate by that much. And to do that, because this is gouged out, I have to cut a little bit into the wood here so that the strike plate can pop back in. This is called a mortise, this hollowed out area. I'm just going to measure the top and that'll tell me how much I'm dropping it. So there's a quarter of an inch, and it was split the difference between an eighth and a quarter. So that's the new bottom line. So I'll make a pencil mark there, and that'll... <laughs> Carpentry will tr try your patience, but you'll be happy with the results. There's my new line, and I, I also have to do the back here, so I'll make a line there too. Also, you'll notice on the strike plate how the, um, this edge curves down um, to catch the latch. So I'm going to have to chisel also at the front, possibly, a little bit. So I'll just, I'll just bring my line forward to here. All right, so now I'm ready to chisel. There are two edges to a chisel. So there's a straight edge and a beveled edge. We want a clean edge, so we're going to put the back, the straight edge, on the bottom of the line here. Now you want to set, get my hammer, you want to set the back edge of this straight line, straight edge just inside the pencil mark. Otherwise, you start to wander and you end up with, a, with too big of a, of a mortise. Now, these taps are to set to bite into the wood, so I'm going to make them quite sharp. And you can see what's happening here. The chisel is biting into the wood and making a nice, clean line from which I can start to, uh, to chisel away the rest of the wood. And then I have one more mark, and that's right here up the back of the, where the strike plate goes. That was easy because it runs with the grain of the wood. All right, now I have to work with the beveled edge down, because what I'm going to be doing now is scooping out this excess wood. If I start to do it with the, uh, the sharp, flat edge down, I end up um, just gouging a huge chunk out of the wood and digging a pit that's uh, just going to be way too deep for what I need. So you can see with each successive tap of the hammer I'm actually dropping the handle so that the blade scoops out the wood in a gentle manner. the fussy part of carpentry. This will take me a little while to get it um, to where I want, but it's very precise because as you remember the strike plate, it's only about a sixteenth of an inch thick um, and I want and I need to get this uh, surface nice and flat and smooth and carved out so that it fits the strike plate perfectly. That's good, and now, as you can see, I have to take out a little bit of whatever that gunk is that was in the hole. So what I'll do is trace the inside edge of the strike plate, and then chisel that out a bit. Good, so the, um, the latch will be able to find a new home right there. 
Now I need to re-drill where the screws go because we've left the old holes behind. In fact, we got rid of that one entirely with that last blow of the chisel. Wood screws can be tricky because there are several uh, diameters that I have to deal with. There's the, the core of the screw, which is the part inside the flanges, the threads. There's the top of the screw, which is a different can you see that? There's a different diameter again. And then there's the, the whole diameter, including the threads. So this drill bit is going to be a little too small, although I think I'll start with it so that the core at the bottom has the right diameter to go into. There's not much wood there, but it'll have to do. And here it's really tricky. You can see that my mark, my mark is just right above the old, um, and the wood is really loose. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> well, there you have it. <laughs> the thing is really pretty much falling apart. Uh, but that's okay because there will be uh, something that, that the screw can grab back in there, hopefully. You know what? There's so little uh, integrity in the wood here that I think what I'm going to do is just try screwing the screws right in and see if they'll grab. I don't want to drill a, a hole that's too big or I'm going to end up with the screws just spinning in the hole because the wood's just really weak. I would normally use a drill to put these screws in except that I, what I'm likely to do is just, it just goes so quickly and I'm just likely to uh, rip the wood out, so I'm going to use a hand screwdriver. There, it finally bit into something back there. It's probably why when I first, when I did all that dramatic preparation, it's probably why they really weren't very tight because the, the wood is so split up. If you try this on your door and y your screws are just spinning wildly when you try to reattach the strike plate, I don't know if you remember, but a while ago I mentioned a tip, which is that you take a cotton ball and saturate it with glue and stuff it into the screw hole and let it dry for 24 hours, and that'll give you a really nice, firm, um, dense mass to screw into. So that's just something to keep in mind. All right, I'll come back and fill this in a second, but let's just see, um, check the door and see how we did. Huh? Huh? Look at that. I'm feeling pretty good about this. So I'm going to caulk this little uh, section that I was just mentioning. I like using caulk around a uh, strike plate and around doors in general because the door opens and closes a lot. There's a lot of movement in the joints, and this stuff's really stretchy, so it won't get brittle and chip out. So, oh, I've got to put on my latex gloves, though. I don't want to ruin those nails. for the old improv. There we go. Nice and slimy. And then I'll just clean up around the strike plate with my wet rag. This should, um, this obviously needs a paint job anyway, so 
The caulking is, is the perfect thing also for this hole because it's paintable. There we go. Okay, that's a strike plate. Not much to it. A little bit of um, fussing, a bit fussy, but other than that, it's much more satisfying to be able to shut that door, and you don't even have to hip check it to get it to shut. It's, it's a thing of beauty.